I have um, the honor of introducing a Dougie Center family to share their Dougie Center story with you. I am going to introduce Megan, Michael, and Mason Sage, and thank them so much for being here today to share with you. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, Michael and Mason and I are very honored to be here to speak to you, um, especially as the theme for today is Portraits of Courage. Years ago, we were a very happy family of four, uh, Michael, Megan, uh, Mason, and Mark. And yes, Mark and I did choose M names for our sons on purpose. <laughs> uh, Mark and I always wanted kids, uh, but becoming parents was a very frightening experience. I suffered from preeclampsia, and Michael was born seven weeks early. Mark had to deal with a wife in the hospital recovering from an emergency C-section, and a newborn baby uh, spending his first couple of weeks in the NICU. One of the most courageous things that I think Mark has, had done was to leave us both in the hospital and to go home and to set up the crib. <laughs> Being a father was such a joy for Mark. He took such pride when people would tell him that his sons looked like him. He loved to call Michael his little mini-me. Uh, we would trade off reading to the boys every night. He loved to play games and do puzzles. And when we visited his parents' house, he would stretch out on the floor with the kids. And he would, they would all play with the toys that Mark played with as a kid. Three years ago, our family was thrown into another terrifying medical situation when Mark fell ill. Mark was just 40 years old, and he was active and happy until back pain put him on disability. Physical therapy and pain medication did not stop the pain from getting worse. For two months, the pain gets increased until he ended up in the hospital on uh, Monday, October 24th of 2016. Uh, the doctors had a hard time figuring out what was wrong with Mark. Two weeks of test results uh, resulted in a diagnosis of stage four uh, metastatic medullary thyroid cancer uh, the first week of November 2016. And despite all of our efforts at treatment, uh, Mark passed away December 14th of 2016. One of the most frightening things that I've had to do was to tell my sons that their father had passed away. Michael, age nine, and Mason, age six. We held each other for a long time. I took leave from work, and the boys uh, left school. Uh, to, they started their winter break early. Although I had just started my healthcare MBA program, I took both my class, I took incompletes in both of my classes as I tried to decide whether or not I was gonna continue school. Now that I had lost my partner and I was the sole provider for my two sons. Luckily, we did not have to be courageous on our own. We have an amazing support system. My mom, dad, stepmom, uh, Mark's mom, Mark's adopted father are all here in town and they helped us through. My aunt and uncle took me to the funeral home to make arrangements. Uh, friends were there as shoulders to cry on and help with many things. And in January uh, 2017, the three of us were courageous as well and we all decided, we all went back to school. 
Uh, Mason returned to first grade, Michael went back to fourth, and I returned to my MBA classes. Uh, the second day of my MBA classes fell on Saturday, January 21st of 2017, and that was the day that would have been Mark's 41st birthday. So for the first two hours of class, I sat in the back and cried, but I stuck it out the rest of the day. Um, fourth grade, Michael had a very caring and sensitive teacher who encouraged his classmates to support him. And he loved being with his classmates, but he was frustrated uh, when he came home because his friends didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to say to him about his dad. And when we tried to talk about it, I, I cried. Um, Providence Hospice Services had given us a packet of grief support information. And in January, they called and asked if we needed anything. And that's when they recommended that we check out the Dougie Center. Uh, at the end of January, uh, we went for an orientation. And uh, Michael and Mason would like to tell you about their experiences at the Dougie Center. Michael? Okay, so when I went to school, my friends didn't really understand how I was feeling or what I was going through. When I went, but when I went to the Dougie Center, I found kids who had lost someone they loved, and it was very comforting to know that I wasn't the only one. I also like going to the Dougie Center because it's easy to make friends, and there are lots of opportunities to share about your feelings. There are games and activities, but what I like to do most about the Dougie Center is to connect with other kids. Mason? No? Well, what Mason wanted to say was that at the Dougie Center, people understand what he goes through and it makes him happy that he has other people supporting him. And also the snacks are really good. <laughs> uh, the, kids, the kids immediately felt at home in the space. Uh, the games and stuffed animals were inviting, the bright colors and activities looked interesting. The kids were really excited to go. At the beginning, I did not share their enthusiasm. Grief is such a hard, personal thing. While I was struggling to deal with all of these life choices, life changes, I really found it hard to share my grief with others. Michael later told me that it was really hard to talk to me about Mark because he hated to make me cry. And the Dougie Center was the one place that he could talk about Mark without feeling like he was causing pain. Earlier this year, uh, the Dougie Center asked us to be part of the StoryCorps uh, a Road to Resilience project, and this is where they were collecting stories uh, to help develop new tools and training for children to help kids in need. And when they reached out to ask us to participate, we agreed. Um, on a cold <laughs> Saturday in February, we drove out to the Dougie Center, and we recorded a conversation between the three of us about grief and about Mark. Uh, I think the 40 minutes that we spent talking to each other and sharing, asking each other questions and sharing information that we had not shared before is one of the best conversations the three of us had ever had. We opened up to each other 
And from that day on, there has been a better understanding and easier communication between the three of us. I am so grateful to the Dougie Center for that opportunity to become closer to my kids, as well as for, for their grief support services. Once the thought of going through life without Mark uh, was pretty terrifying. Um, together with the support of friends and family and the Dougie Center, um, all of us M sages <laughs> found the courage to go on. Before I graduated this year with my MBA, I thanked all of my MBA classmates uh, for their help and support these last three years. And I let them know how much the Dougie Center had supported my children. And together, our class raised $250, which we donated to the Dougie Center under Mark's name. Other family members shared with me before this lunch that they had also donated to this organization, knowing how much it has helped us and how grateful we are to attend every other week. It's our sincerest wish to help support this important organization. I remember feeling lost and without a way to help my kids. And before we went to the Dougie Center, I really want the same welcoming environment that we found to be here for every family that goes through something like this. There are children out there who need this connection and support, so we're here to ask you to give generously to the Dougie Center so that the services that they provide continue to be here for families just like ours. So really, thank you for being here today. <laughs>